Hi friends, this is Pickfun Medical Courses. Hope you will be fine. Please subscribe my channel for latest medical videos. My motto is medicine should be interesting. Today our topic is Weber syndrome. Here we go. Weber syndrome occurs due to the occlusion of branch, perforating branches of posterior cerebral artery. It occurs due to the injury to the midbrain, usually caused by stroke due to the occlusion of posterior cerebral artery. Rare causes include brain tumors, brain trauma, and infections. This is the cross-section of midbrain at the level of superior colliculus. This is the anterior part and this is the posterior part. This portion is tectum, this portion is tegmentum, and this portion is called base. So these structures are superior colliculus. This is cerebral aqueduct. This is periaqueductal gray area. And this is laminisci. These are the red nucleus. And this portion is cross cerebri and it contains these corticobulbal fibers and corticospinal fibers. This is the basilar artery and these are the branches of the basilar artery, perforating branches of the posterior cerebral artery. And this is the third cranial nerve. So, now we describe the Weber syndrome. This portion is involved in Weber syndrome. Cross cerebri and third nerve when stroke occurs due to the occlusion of the perforating branches of the posterior cerebral artery there is the involvement of third cranial nerve and involvement of the cross cerebri cross cerebri contains the corticobulbar fibers and corticospinal fibers so the structures involved in weber syndrome are third cranial nerve corticospinal tracts and corticobulbar tracts. There are findings on the ipsilateral side and on contralateral side. On ipsilateral side, there is the third nerve palsy and there will be the ipsilateral ophthalmoplegia due to the involvement of the third cranial nerve. There, there will be external strabismus. There will, there will be the ptosis due to the paralysis of the elevator palpebri superioris muscle and there will be the fixed dilated pupil due to the damage to the parasympathetic fibers of the third cranial nerve. So on ipsilateral side due to the paralysis of the third cranial nerve there will be the ptosis, there, may, there will be mydriasis and there will be the uh, external strabismus or squint. So on contralateral side there are two fibers are involved corticospinal tracts and corticobulbar tracts. So contralateral so there will on contralateral side there will be the paralysis of lower part of face and tongue due to the destruction of corticobulbar fibers. So due to the involvement of the corticobulbar fibers on contralateral side, there will be the paralysis of lower part of face and tongue. And on contralateral side, due to the involvement of the corticospinal fiber, there will be the paralysis of upper and lower limb. So on ipsilateral side, there will be the finding of third cranial nerve involvement. And on contralateral side, there will be the findings of involvement of corticobulbar fibers and corticospinal fibers. 
there is a interesting mnemonic to remember the findings in Weber syndrome core i3 this is a laptop core i3 core contralateral hemiplegia and i3 ipsilateral third nerve palsy so by remembering core i3 you can remember the findings in weber syndrome contralateral hemiplegia and ipsilateral third nerve palsy thanks for watching please subscribe my channel for latest medical updates for the latest who guidelines for latest fda approvals for colorful medical mnemonics for colorful usmle high yield points and for uh, latest Harrison lectures and Davidson lectures. Thanks for watching.